folks, Bob Moffat, Ram Nation 58. I'm going to be going through a machine I've not run before. It's a Everlast Cyclone 200E. I've set it all up. I've got it on 110 volt power. I just want to run through some default settings and kind of get acquainted with it. Uh, right now I've got this set. We're going to run 023 wire, 14 gauge material. And I just want to run some beads. We'll do another video where we're going through some settings and putting together some materials in different joint configurations and figuring out what settings work best. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I really want to make sure that I have a ground hooked up here. I've, I've been trying to weld for a lot of years without a ground. We're going to be using the power set today. I'm going to default to 023 wire and I'm going to 14 gauge material which reads out 18.4 volts and 400 inches a minute on wire feed speed. Wow. <laughs> wow. That sounded pretty impressive. Seriously. Yeah, first welds out of the gate. I'm impressed. I'm impressed by the sound. When I hear something like that, I know this is uh, it's hooking up. I know where that rough start came from, and that's ground. Holy smoke. Now, I don't think it's going to have a hard time starting after this. I'm going to run another bead, and it starts right up. That is a pretty impressive arc, pretty impressive sound and deposit here. I'm, uh, I'm real curious to run some different size wires and go through the defaults, but then I really want to experiment and see what's going to happen when we start finding our own settings. I think this is going to be a little fighter, a little screamer here. Pretty stout arc features. Hey, uh, this is cool. I've been reading the manual here a little bit and uh, I can go down these default to four, the, the setting defaults to 400 inches a minute, 18.4 on 14 gauge. But I've got a range that I can drop this wire feed speed down to 390. It makes a little bit of a difference. But here's the other cool thing. I can go an entire volt down or an entire volt up off the original setting. In my experience, I've seen a half of a volt make a difference in some of the welds that I've done on like piping and position welds and whatnot. Uh, so I don't, I'm not real interested in going any higher on the 14 gauge in the volts other than I want to go up a half of a volt. So it was at 18.4, I'm at 18.9 and I'm going to drop this down to 390. I expect this to make the difference that I'm looking for, and that's not the, the really hard, crispy type of weld pool, that sound. It's just, it's almost borderline too much wire. Whereas I've noticed, in my experience, if it, if it just, if it misses the ground or something happens, then the machine spits and spatters a little bit. And I don't want that. I want just a little bit more wetting and voltage in there to help this recover. And I really think that that's going to fine tune this enough to make the difference that I want to see here. All right, here we go. 390, 18.9. That's, that's just silly. It is so crisp. Wow. That's the, that's the reaction I was looking for. A little more wetting, uh, a little heavier sound. I even sped up at the end of this weld and tried to, you know, kind of outrun it a little bit, make it do something, and it, it didn't. It didn't back off of one bit. It just runs everything that it's got coming at it, so uh, pretty impressive so far. I'm going to do something here as a little test with myself, and I'll do this on some experiment welds, on some weld joints where I do outside corner. I'm going to lengthen the electrical stick out where I'm going to be welding with the 
wire out here probably half inch or five eighths or so and I'm going to see if the machine uh, spits or doesn't keep up with this change here. This should cool the weld off for amperage but the volts are going to remain the same. Normal arc length. I'm pulling it way back. I'm three quarters of an inch. Wow. Wow. I've operated a lot of machines in my day and I can tell you sometimes when you do that you're increasing the resistance out here in the wire but the machine will start spitting and spattering and it won't, it won't keep up with that. It doesn't like it. I use it sometimes and I run into a gap and I'm too fat and lazy to go back to the machine and make an adjustment. I just keep welding but I pull the wire back and run a longer extension. Kind of an advanced trick but my point is this thing keeps up with it. I don't, I don't see a tone change in what's happening with the arc and I'm watching it. I'm running little bitty circles going along. I, I mean, I, 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 honestly, I'm just impressed. It's cool. I'm going to turn the gas up a little bit so I can maybe facilitate a, a, a stupid experiment here. I'm going to actually see how far I can pull this thing back, see if it just doesn't want to keep up. I'll start out normal for about half inch or so. And I'm just going to keep increasing this thing while I weld, see how far we can pull it back. I'm out to about an inch. Well, you got to give this thing credit. I mean, I'm, I'm hanging out there way too much. It's still trying to weld. I increase the gas flow a little bit to accommodate that. I'm probably, I might be drawing ambient air in with a Venturi effect, I don't know, but wow, that's, that's cool. This does have a little porosity in it. I wouldn't weld that way, but I'm, again, I'm kind of, that's how I test a machine. I go in and I, I, I listen and look for arc characteristics and I kind of, I'll do things and see if it'll, I can make it fail is what I'm trying to say. So this little guy wants to hang in there. So I'm impressed. Cyclone 200E, I think we're around whatever, $600 or so. Hey, I'm curious because that's the way I am. I was so impressed with this, the beads we ran on here. I want to go ahead and just throw down onto a typical application of a fillet weld. Um, now I would expect running beads on a plate is one thing. Uh, you're going to have to, it requires a little more, I'm going to say a little more power to get back into, we put something together in a fillet weld uh, in order to get this correct fusion. I may have to go back up in, uh, in that half, another half a volt, but I kind of don't think so. Anyway, I want to try this. I've cleaned some material off this 14 gauge 0.0747 for the decimal folks. Uh, millimeters, I'm not sure. Have to look at that. Wow, that's just a crispy little sound. I like it. All right, this is an actual application here, so let's weld something. Yeah, I like it, but I notice something. Notice that little sputtering thing there. So I'm going to stay at 390 on the default, but I want to increase this voltage. I'm going to use the other half of volt. It's going from 18.9. I'm going to go ahead and use the half of the volt that I need here. I just, I, I just like that better. It may have sounded strange, but I, I like what I'm seeing here as far as the toes of the weld. I'll look at the backside and see if there's any melt through type. I mean, it looks like I was welding a little bit slower. A little bit of scale comes off of here, even though I've sanded this down and taken the mill scale off, there's still a surface uh, fluff here from the, from the heat. I actually like this profile better. I was welding smaller. Uh, it's just a, 
to me it's just a sharper profile. Again, we're at 14 gauge. How big a weld do we need to lay down? You know, is, I would try to lay the smallest weld down. Well, I can make money with this little machine here. So I'm going to go to an outside corner joint. And that to me is very common because I, I do a lot of boxes and containers and like put them up from scratch. Okay, I'm going to start this weld at the highest settings of, of the, the power set for 14 gauge. I'm at 390 inches a minute and I'm at 19.4 volts. It's an outside corner joint with a little bit of gap, a sixteenth or so, 332 down here. I, when I start this, I expect it to be too hot and I'm, I want to be able to turn it down. That to me is borderline excessive. So I've welded a little over an inch and I see it just borderline excessive. It's melted in there nicely, have full pin on the back side. However, I'm running down and I'm gonna be getting into a little bit wider gap. The nice thing about this power set is from default I have one volt up, one volt down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down to about, let's see, there was default at 18.4 and 400. I've dropped it down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and go down to like 17.6. So from 19.4, 19.4 volts, I'm going down to 17.6. I expect to see a noticeable difference and probably gain back a little bit of control on this heat sensitive outside corner joint. I was wrong. Now that right there is too much wire for the given condition. I need to up the volts because that's all I have available to do. I can't drop the wire speed anymore and that's okay. So I'm going to go back to the original 18.4 and pull the trigger. And we're right back to screaming. So, I'm learning. Uh, it responded nicely when I, I mean, that was, a, that was a big change. Two volts is a lot. For those of you that have not been in the wire feeds, or the wire gas metal arc welding game, that's a lot, really, uh, when, you, when you start noticing what happens in the arc. If you have any questions on that, you know, get a hold of us. We'll gladly explain it to you. But uh, this thing is, wow. We can, we can turn this joint around and we've got pretty much full penetration all the way down it. Which would be, you know, do a project, watertight, uh, sealed, don't need, to, don't need to weld both sides. Decrease detor distortion and heat input that way, but uh, wow, impressive. Now I'm really curious to make another video and go into some settings manually and go into like eighth inch or even three sixteenths and possibly even do a bevel maybe all the way up to three eighths plate or something i don't know we'll we'll experiment i really think it'll handle it so i'm excited here what i'm seeing i want to i want to experiment some more on some other joint configurations and thicknesses and different thick different sizes of wire and everything so again cyclone 200e uh cool little machine little fighter man it's uh it wants to stay in play I'm Bob Moffat, Ram Nation 58, Weld Mean, Weld Green. If you want to see another cool video, check this out.